Hey, pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be the latest NHL show. As we just did the Eastern Conference, I'll link that video at the end. Check it out. As now we're going to jump into the Western Conference and break down their playoff chances and what the chances are for the Western Conference team as they head into the postseason and where we think their uh, upcoming chances are at. But um, first of all, Evan, how are you doing today? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me back on here a second time today. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to come back on to uh, one of the shows until Monday. I'll be uh, relatively busy after that, but I'm ready to talk some hockey again today, talk about the West. Yeah, if the schedule matches, we would love to have you on for the JB and Steel show that I do with Steel. Usually... We do record them mostly Mondays this week. We did Tuesdays because it depends on our schedules, but mm-hmm. uh, the, that's the one that we go longer. It's an all-sports show, but you could just be on if you just want to talk about hockey. But I know you're a big football guy. Too, oh, so we, I have off work Monday. I just remembered that because it's like a Muslim holiday that I've never heard of before. So oh, I'm like, okay. all right. I have oh, off Monday, so I'm oh, okay. Monday. I'm I'm okay. Monday. I'm very well, wide open. Monday, just yeah, that. we'll have you on because two. You're you're good with NFL draft. Uh, shit as well. We're, that's something we're going to be recapping with. Then we can have you recap your Baltimore Ravens picks if you want. Steel will yeah. do the Steelers picks, and I can t- and I can do the Eagles picks, and then we can do that. And you, then we- you said you got out of uh, a little bit out of touch with the NFL draft this year, right? If I remember uh, correctly, I got for me. I I paid attention to it from like just a normal run of the mill fan standpoint. Where normally I'm the one of the people that tries to be as invested yeah. as possible between what I've been doing with hockey and trying to get to mm-hmm. opportunities to cover baseball too. I haven't had the time to do so I've read stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, there's I just a lot more attention to my guys, like the guys that I think the Eagles have a good chance of targeting than mm-hmm. I had the entire spectrum where with gotcha. uh, where with baseball and hockey I just pay attention to basically the whole entire show Yeah, I, I get you. Yeah, I would I'll have to do a yeah, I'll have to do a recap or something. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to finalize my mock later on today or sometime tomorrow before it goes in tomorrow night at eight. So, anyways, um, I know this is a hockey show. But I just remember. Yeah, no, 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 We could jump yeah. right into it now as we'll go from the bottom up again. And this one, we talked about yep. it before the show. This team that I just did a video on earlier, I think they honestly have one of the more under talked about coaches in hockey that deserves more credit. Uh, Rick Bonus's uh, Dallas Stars, uh, mm-hmm. that he gets the most out of that roster because they don't have the sexiest roster on paper. That's what I said in that video. I did. They 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 just they have guys that just find a way to get it done, and he finds a way to put them in the yeah. positions to get it done. Because minus Klingberg, their entire defense is very good at quickly getting the puck off of the blade of the other team and pushing it up to the offense and running offense through your defense basically and running it that way which is reminds me so much of many coaches you see that work their way up levels from ECHL to AHL to NHL where bonus of course was away from hockey for a minute came back had success as the interim got to stay and has continued to have success the opposite of Kruger who came back from soccer and obviously that did not work out for him so it, there's it goes both ways but I think he deserves the credit that yeah. with the West though I'm not putting their percentages that high. Theirs is similar to the um, to your caps, but even a bit low. I would say like eight percent, just because they're the West top heavy teams are ridiculous. Yeah. But the reason I might even say as far like that's more of a tweener, eight to ten percent for me in my mind, just because Ottinger to me isn't just one of the more talented young goalies. I think honestly he's one of the more talented goalies in the league. That if he can get hot like Demko did. Mm-hmm. In that one series for um, Vancouver that nobody expected, you never know. The sky's the limit at that point. Yeah, it's, that, yeah. that's goals are strange. Uh, them a high percentage on paper. They don't look like the sexiest team, but their first line is killer. Robertson, yeah, one that's, of the best yeah. young scorers in the league. But beyond that, you have Sagan in your second line with Ben. That's fine, but depth is a concern there. But their defense yeah. is good in my eyes. And their goaltender is really good. And Wedgwood's come in and actually become a good backup in this league late in his uh, 20. So uh, the, I don't want him as my starter of the players, but as a backup, uh, that's fine. Right. Where I, I think that's why I give him that high of a percentage, where some people are probably going to be more like 3 to 5% for the stars. But Yeah, I was going to give a lower number like that too. My, my question is first, 
Uh, I might have been out of the loop here. Is Had- Hadobin's been out for a while? Is he just out the whole season? He's been out, and then when he came back, it's not like he performed astronomically. So then he was down with the Texas Stars, yeah. and he was playing in the uh, A. And now I believe he's banged up again. Yeah, he is banged up. Uh, now he's out for the six months. That's right. He got that other injury. So they have Colton and, then what about and uh, Adam Shield playing down there. Holpe, he's he's a big wild card for me, too, because I actually – last year he played good as well, but I actually liked how that tandem worked before he got banged up of Ottinger and Holpe, and I think he deserves credit as well for being able yeah, to – Yeah, because I, I see that Holpe's out, but I just don't know for how long. He, it's supposed to be – it's week to week, so I could see – like he might – I would put a might on it, come back in the postseason, but if he, if they – if Adi carries them and then you get the veteran of Braden Holpe that has the experience one one already, yeah. um, that's a nice thing to have if they are somehow able to, which I don't think – that's why I, I'm on the higher end of the percentages, but don't give them a higher one because they're not – I don't think they're going to get out of the first round with their tough matchup that they're slated for right now. But if they do because of ridiculous goaltending and the great defensive play, which this team can do um, – I wouldn't be shocked if they are able to be that dark horse run team like they were two years ago again if the goaltending gets hot because yeah. uh, that, that that's kind of what the stars line and bonus yeah. has to play great from their defense right to run their defense into their offense yeah their their goal their goal I mean well not not just theirs but goaltending in general is just strange uh, and I mean like two years ago. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Hadovin was the one that like went on a good run. And help take them to the Stanley Cup Finals, and they lost in. Gosh, they lost in six, I think, to Tampa. I can't. He and Adi honestly stepped up because that was and Bishop was good, but that was when Bishop was starting to have the first uh, signs of having the lower body stuff. Bishop was like always injured. Like when he was healthy, he was so good. Oh yeah, he was. He just always got injured. Like yeah, he was. That was, was one of the best goalies in hockey when healthy. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And then he retired and was like, I'm always injured. There's no point in me being in the league. Um, so you're you're giving them what what'd you say an an eight an eight percent? I'm like eight to ten percent top, but that's because I'm really high on Ottinger as a goaltender. So that's why my percentage goes up because yeah. goal, goalie and defense, I'm high on how bonus has them play defense from their defensive system. Because they right. do have Fosca who's having a bad year, but he usually has been a better two way player. Um Raffle's usually been a better two way player than this year. Ben's right. too slow to be the greatest two-way player anymore. He's more available in the offensive zone now, but Hinch is a good two-way player. Uh, their first line is all good two-way guys. It's just their forward core isn't the sexiest defensively. Where they, That's why they need to be able to have a little bit more depth scoring from that bottom six. That's my but big problem. You have had ne- Nemestikov perform pretty well this year. And then Dennis Gurianov has not mm-hmm. been the same, but has been fine as a bottom six role. So if those guys can – Step up in the mm-hmm. playoffs, particularly Goriano, that right. would be a huge step in the way. Yeah, and I mean, also, too, like, speaking of uh, the goaltenders, I actually, uh, the last cap month ago, we played the Stars, and I think Ottinger was in there. Holpe was hurt, but we had a nice little, like, tribute to Brendan Holpe, like, welcome home, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It just... The past few years, there's always – it just seems to be, like, that one team that, like, goes on a far run that, like, nobody expects. Like, last year with the Canadians and the year before that with the Stars, the Blues the year before that, the Capitals, and, and even Vegas the year before that. Like, there's always – or not always, but most of the time, there's that one, like, random team that just goes on a deep run. Like, I'm sure when we all make our brackets, they're all going to be jacked up by, like, round two because there's going to be – just a random team pulling off an upset. Um, just like I do like the Stars' yeah. top line, like you said. Like Robertson's been amazing. I think this is his second year in the league. Uh, Forty goals, definitely the best Asian player in all of hockey. Which I think it's it's cool because you don't really see too many no, of that demographic yeah. doing doing good um, in that sport because it's you know culture blah blah. blah. It's not, yeah, it's not as and it's nice to see. Because that's what hockey's trying to, well, the players are trying to do more of now. Oh, yeah. Which yeah, is I'm with fine. that organization of the hockey for everybody. Like, yeah, I just think it's like, interesting to, like, see that. It's like it's like, it's like like back in the day, it's like, oh, I didn't know white people could rap. And then Eminem came in and just dominated the game. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> but, like, it's just, it's just cool to see stuff like that. Like, uh, Robertson's been a beast this year. 
I think he had two goals last night. I mean, that top line has just been awesome. I mean, there's him, there's Hens. Pavelski's a good playoff performer. He can maybe perhaps uh, help as well. He has a, I feel like he's one of the players that gets better in the postseason than he does in the regular season. Uh, speaking of Asian hockey, Japanese prodigy, I think he's like 12. Um, I forget his name. I'll have to post it on the Facebook page, but he's done some filthy stuff. I forget his name. It was like a GoPro video. There's also a good um, ECHL player um, from the Asian community. But, yeah, there's a couple guys in hockey. It's just because the the talent level is getting uh, vaster at large, where now you're just naturally having guys more spaced out because of just, I think, also each new generation is more introspectively interested in new experiences where people before were kind of more afraid of change and changing their setting where i think that's not the case as much anymore people are like i can move to york for two years screw it yeah i'll do it where like that's so then that expands hockey because you have guys from the states that might be really into hockey and then they talk to their european friends about it and then they start going to the uh english league uh hockey games and then from that they're like oh let's go to america to see an nhl and it's all like different word of mouth and different stuff like that because hockey obviously is not the best at overall advertising Oh my gosh, you're trash at marketing. It pisses me off. Like they, they like don't know how to market the game. Or I don't want to get too deep into it. No, gosh, we don't have to like, get deep. Come into on, that. But, but what's your percentage? Uh, anyways, let me get my the, let me get my number. Yeah, what's your um, percentage on this tour? I mean, they run into the abs in round one. That's pretty much. Um, I think as of tonight, they're gonna probably announce like, all right, starves abs round one. Which, ugh, okay, uh. I guess because of those factors, like the top line, um, may, I mean, the defensive players aren't bad either, but like, I just think overall that team's not like that, that great. And then if you look at their goal differential, I think right now it's like five or something like that. They're a minus uh, nine, they're still, but they built that up because of injuries yeah. throughout the season. Like they were, ba- like they were a playoff potential team like in the minus 20s at one point where they have definitely improved. Right. I'd give them i give them like a 3. A 3. Okay, yeah, that's respectable. I think I'm definitely the high end of of yeah. in them just because I like Bonus as his style. He doesn't have the yeah. best players for his He's style. He's done a good job with that team. Because he also doesn't have the best players for like you should be getting him more two-way central like a Lawson Kraus for example would be perfect for bonus if they traded for him because Kraus is not only effective in the offensive zone but is also effective in his own zone so like those players seem to profile more to Rick Bonus Mm -hmm. Dallas doesn't have enough of those guys minus in their top six so like yeah and and then defense I think he's fine with the defense but I think the reason Klingberg wasn't trade room is honestly was he doesn't necessarily fit bonuses system as much as he wants to have right. guys like Harley who are going to be great offensively potentially, but also develop into more of that good two-way guy, kind of like a Cam Yorkish type guy rather than a just great on one end type guy. Mm-hmm. So it's a different, it's a different realm basically. But when it comes to the Nashville Predators and UC Soros, uh, who is a goaltender that I know uh, some at the beginning of his career definitely did not think uh, what he's become at this point of his career uh, would come to fruition. You have Dave Poley still trying to get one. You got Hines playing a more push the amp paced offense. So it's a wonder, like we said about some Eastern Conference teams, will they kind of, because they played at that amp pace all season to and played at that fight and fire in their belly, you can't come into our born style all season. Is that going to wear on them kind of going into the postseason? Because it's shown a little bit rounding out the regular season. But in terms of their overall roster, I would say Nashville has a weirdly actually decently set up on paper playoff roster if all goes right it's just their offense has to amp it up an extra step as a whole because obviously that first line has produced greatly and Johansson oh, yeah. has really stepped up this year yep. and Janot's been a godsend but there but between like Cunning yeah Forge, but yeah that's the first line so I included him Gromlin yep. and just okay, okay and then uh Cunning Tomasino Trennan and everybody they all fit into the roles but you're going to need like a Sissons a Trennan and a you know Janot you know, you're going to need one of those guys to perform a little bit more to Janot Levels, your bottom six. And and also, great. too, like, Duchesne, Duchesne's been finally living up to his contract. Yep. He's he's one of those, like, hot and cold players, it, it seems like. Um, That's true. I, I agree, though. Nashville's got a pretty good roster. 
They do. Like, they have that weirdly, like, they don't, for some reason, they just compete too much in waves. Like, they get hot, and then they go in this, like, four to five game little spell, and then they get hot, go into a four to five game little spell. And that's the only reason, like, right now they're in a spell. They're three, four, and three in their last ten. Where, where that's the reason why you look at Nashville and go, I don't know really where to rank them. Because Ross Ross, I love Yossi Fabro. I love Ekholm. Alexander Carrier has just got ridiculous this season. He was always good in the AHL, but I never thought of him being this good in the NHL. And he's just paired ridiculously with Ekholm. Uh, Barecki's a solid veteran, nothing special but solid veteran. And then Benning hasn't played that good of a season, but... Personally, I've mm-hmm. always just liked him as a fill-in defenseman. But they also have Luzon, who did play a solid season enough. Not great, but solid enough. So if he comes back, um, yeah, he's then hurt. that would be good. Yeah, he's hurt right now. But if he comes back, that's huge. Because the big reason, similar to what we said about a certain Eastern Conference team, is their goaltender. uc has been banged up to end the season, similar to just how uh, Tristan Yari, of course, um, for Pittsburgh or, um, has been a little bit better. So you have those things have to be considered for why they haven't been the sexiest throughout of the season. Ingram's played solid in two games. So I think that'll put in a one. I have to give them probably, I would say like a 12, just because of what I said about the roster. I like the roster a lot, but the top heaviness of just how good those top teams like Colorado, for example, or for one yeah. in the West is going to make it tough on any of these lower teams like the Stars and the Preds. It's not as balanced as the East is a quick way to say it. That right, right. to get as deep, so to speak. Well, I think I think most people that watch hockey can like agree that the East is clearly without a doubt better than the West, kind of like the NBA where the East was better than the West for a long time. Um, right now, this year, no doubt about it, the East is – Definitely, definitely, definitely better than the West. Um, I kind of want to write out all my percentages later on tonight just to see what the average is and all that just for just for fun. But uh, anyways, yeah, Na- Nashville's good. Honestly, I think they're probably my dark horse team in the West. Um, I mean, I like what they I like what Phil uh, Forsberg's done this year. Duchesne's been good. Johansson's been good. Janot's been a – is that Hebrows' last name? Janot, yeah, Tanner yeah. Janot. He's been a solid rookie. There was a bunch of good rookies this year. Um, I like Colton Sissons as a third-line center. Um, I mean, Nick Cousins is a good fourth-line player, in my Harry opinion. Harry even has become a good fourth-line player as a center for them, too. So you- yep. And, and I mean, the way Roman Yossi's played, which, like, it's either going to be him or McCarr that wins the, the Norris, which we've already talked about a couple of days ago – I mean, he Yossi's been a maniac. Um, I mean, it's nice to have that elite number one defenseman because if you look at the past couple Stanley Cup winners, there was that elite number one mm-hmm. defenseman. Other than the Penguins when they lost Latang the second time they won the Cup in recent years, which that impressed the hell out of me. Like I don't know how you won a Cup without a number one defenseman, but yeah, you know, them with Latang, us with John Carlson, the Blues with um, Petrangelo the lightning twice in a row with uh headman like having a number one defenseman is so huge and then you do have uc soros which i just read that i think they're gonna give him a breather the rest of the week just because he's a little bit banged up but they i was reading on there that he should be ready by game one and um it's looking more and more likely that nashville is gonna have to play against the flames round one i'm looking at this thing uh well actually i don't know them and dallas have the same amount of points i guess it all depends so yeah, Nashville's either gonna have to play. I didn't even think about that. I for some reason I thought Nashville was up on Dallas, but they're both tied at 95. Um so yeah, one of them's gonna have to play the Avalanche, the other one's gonna have to play the Flames. I mean, I'm still gonna keep my percentage for the stars at three because the flames are pretty damn good and obviously we'll go yeah, to the them later. C, the two C teams are kind of the best teams in the West when it comes to Calgary and Colorado. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, so I mean, I think I think Nashville could be a dark horse because, like I said, you have that number one defenseman. You have good forwards. Soros has been a monster this year. He'll probably get top five in Vesna voting. I think he's good enough to like steal a series um, if you really need him to. I think he's one heck of a goaltender. Um, I'd say within what'd you say a twelve? Uh, I was twelve. Yeah. I'd uh, hmm, I'd say like a fifteen. Fifteen. I, I mean, I might also be kind of biased because, like, I kind of want them to do well just because of how awesome the city of Nashville is. Like, I went there oh, back yeah. in 
Dude, Nashville's an awesome city. I went I back there. I went, I went, yeah, I, I saw that. I noticed it. The Smashville thing. That's from Bridgestone I have a, Arena. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Bridgestone Arena is the bomb. Like, that is the best place to watch a hockey game that I've ever been to. Like, I've been to Capital One Arena. I've been to the Pepsi Center in Denver. And then Bridgestone, best hockey venue that I've ever been to. And, like, all the bars are, like, literally right next to it. Like, <laughs> bars on top of bars on top of bars. Like, you can walk like it. If you're ever in Nashville, for whoever's listened to this, go see a Preds game. It wasn't even against the Caps. I didn't care. And like the tickets were like relatively reasonable. It's like 80, 90 bucks, uh, 200 level, like, like right in the middle. Like I saw all the action. Like it was them against the Sharks. They won 3 2. Just an awesome time. Uh, they love their hockey there, which is weird to say because they're in Tennessee. Uh, yeah. So that's a little bit of the reason well, why yeah, I'm like, Nashville does well. <laughs> they're all down south teams that really do. And they, yeah, they, they are obsessed with it. That's how that Smashville hashtag became a thing with how obsessed they are. Uh, yeah. With, almost to the degree of how. So I'll, I'll go 15. I'll give them 15. Okay. Yeah. I, I definitely respect that because I think they have a change as a darker team. I just think the West is way more top heavy that it's tough uh, when. Yeah. They would be my dark horse in the West. Yeah. But, but when it comes to this team. That is third in the Pacific Division um, and has a guy that some thought um, wasn't a great head coach during his time with the Oilers and others thought was let go too soon with the Oilers. So it depends on people's opinion is, is that. But Todd McClellan that has done a pretty good job with the Kings. And also what I've liked from following him is he seems to be a pretty good. He I don't know if he always was following him in his career, but now a good players coach and knowing who's the guys to get more up on them and be like, you got to do blah, 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 and get, get more in their face to motivate. And who are the guys? Cause there's been stories with like the Kalparis of the world with the Lazage, with the, where he knows how to just like kind of not nurture, but like progress steady Eddie guys along and know the guys you can push hard and know the guys you have to progress more steady Eddie along. And I think that's why you've seen very good years out of like the Trevor Moore's of the world out of the onto since going there has kind of played his best hockey um, Carl Grundstrom's actually fit in as a fourth line role. Arthur Kaliev has mixed in well. Dustin Brown has played better yeah. since he's been there in late career style. Dustin You're Brown never used to be. But like, and their defense, even through injuries, the most impressive thing is just the step up mentality of that defense. Because Sean Walker's a pretty damn good defensive defenseman from the right side. Mikey Anderson's a very valuable defense into their team because he's the one that pairs with Drew Doughty, and then Drew Doughty's out for the season. But yeah, he's out for the rest Mikey of the year. Anderson isn't out for the season. He's only week to week. So I think a big key I is- was going to ask you, if you don't mind me cutting you off, so Anderson's week to week. I was going to ask you about him and Walker. How long? Anderson's week to week, right? season. Walker was like an ACL. That was an injury. Oh, season. yeah, that's done. Yeah, ACL so that, that, was, that was beginning of the season. He was out. Yeah, he only played like six games or something like that. But – He's a guy that I've just liked as a potential for the Flyers to even get at some point. And even now on a reboot, I don't mind because he's 26. Uh, even coming off of an ACL, he's going to be cheaper to get. Because if he comes back, he's very good in his uh, defensive zone and is a right-handed defenseman that I think would profile to what my team needs because they, they have a Wiley that I like in the minors as a prospect uh, from the right side, but they don't have a lot of depth of NHL ready guys at the uh, right Mm. side there. But when it comes to the Kings, I do like their team kind of as they're to me. And this one, I might be a little bit biased on because Reading Royals, great Jonathan quick is on the LA Kings. And there's a bobblehead of him sitting right over there. Um, Oh, really? That's But the, uh, but I do think they're kind of my dark horse team that them. I give the 15% to just because they have the veterans of Kopitar that have done it before. And is not the same Kopitar. Obviously, I agree. People have said he's not the same quickness, of, but but he's still a very good player and yeah. a very valuable player. That first line's good. What I like about the Kings is they might not have the best top six, but they have a good top six and they have a better bottom six than some teams in terms of their production. They've been able to put out with the other follows, Lazats and Brown together with the Grunstrom's Byfields, obviously a much more talented than a fourth line center. He's just 19. So you might even get him to explode in some games in the playoffs. And same goes with Kali. If he's much more talented than a fourth line and he's just 20. So it's just kind of where those guys are slotted. So, I think they have kind of the potential to surprise teams. The only reason I probably would have even gave them higher as a surprise team if their pairing was active, because Anderson and 
Dowdy is one of the better pairings in the league, too, with how mm-hmm. well Anderson and Dowdy go together. And Mikey Anderson also made Drew Dowdy's later part of his uh, career into his 30s much easier for him because Dowdy was kind of, once he turned 30, kind of going a little bit down a bit. And then when Anderson came up and started really playing more games and being mixed in at, like, the age of 21 fully was a complete difference in that pair. So that's why I don't think they – have the most fantastic chance, but I but the reason I still give them a good chance is I have to give credit where credit's due to the Jacob Morvaris of the world, the Sean Derseys of the world, the Jordan Spences of the world, where those guys stepped up more than I've ever really seen young defensemen have to step up for a team and just mm-hmm. go, screw it, we're great. I'm continuing what I did in the minors. Don't worry about me. I don't need to like like you don't usually see that as easily as these guys were able to jump into the fold here and that's credit to Tom McClellan but that's also credit to the veterans in that Kings locker room and the youngsters and the character of that locker room obviously to be able to kind of bring everybody in and have them fit in because that goes with when Anderson's played when Velarde when Capari when Brady and Lemieux's played uh Troy Stretcher's played Tobias Bjornfoot Austin Strand so they have some young depth that also will give them fresh legs when it comes to their uh, potential scratches that that also would put fear in me that they're not a team I love playing in the first round because Pedersen is a goaltender that had a down season in part, but then also his stats are skewed because his season was so this that he kind of mm-hmm. got off to such a bad start. Then he started really to get going that he's not really what his stats fully show and his expected numbers are better than what his. So I think he's looked better than statistics. Quick also then picked up Pedersen to start. Pedersen got good, and now Quick's been uh, fantastic. And so I think they're a team that's going to rely on their tandem more than most teams. But I think they do have a good one that if one of those guys gets the hot hand, that's when they're even more dangerous. But even in tandem, that's what made them dangerous the whole season. I even trust that because they have different guys to go to. Like if you want to add more jam and you don't like how Grunts will play, we game, you can put Brendan Lemieux in. So, like, they have different options there. That's why mm-hmm. I'm giving them 15%, plus the veteran guys that have already been there and done that. And Matt Roy, who's also one of the better right-handed de- defensive in the defensive zone defenseman in hockey. So. Man, I got to say, your hockey knowledge is super impressive. You definitely know more than I do, but also, too, you've probably watched it a lot longer than I have. I'm still trying to catch up more for the past couple of years. Uh, that's impressive. Well, you're also a lot busier than uh, me, where I do all the – I have the luxury of just doing the DoorDash and other jobs that I pick up. And if I like them, I stay with them. I'm not whatever. And doing all those odd jobs, yeah. so to speak, other than covering the speed. Dude, let me tell you, the right job will come to you. Like, I, it took me forever. But uh, trust me on that. The right job will come to oh, you. Yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah, the right job will come to you. Just anyways, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Um, I, I'm, I'm probably not as high on the Kings. As you are, and a buddy of mine probably will will tell me that it's his dark horse too. Because before the season started, he picked them to win the Stanley Cup. Where I was like, oh wow, like okay, oh, like I, I figured they would be a playoff team, but I didn't picture them as one of the more like dominant teams. I mean, Jonathan Quick definitely gives them a chance with how good he's been in the playoffs historically. Even when they got swept by Vegas a couple of years ago, like he stepped up. Jonathan Quick was going off, but they lost every game like one nothing, two one, like three two. He can, yeah. he, he can only do so much. Like he's not, he can't, you know, contribute to offense a whole whole lot because he's a goalie. Um, but I mean, I think because of Quick, I also like Philip Deneau more in the playoffs. He's a good like shut down yep. center kind of guy. He could probably, um, you know. Uh, put some wrinkles in some things. I mean, Kopitar had a pretty good year. Um, I think Arvinson's pretty solid. Um, Quinn Byfield's gotten like, like a little bit better. I think he started playing like halfway through the season, but he's what, like 20 years old. So he's got, he's got, yeah, he's only 19. Yeah. He can't even, he can't even leave to drink a beer yet. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, Either can call yeah. yeah. Well in America, but uh, <laughs> anyways, um, but my main concern is obviously the defensemen just getting hurt. Like you're, they lost their number one defenseman for the year. Um, and then Anderson's hurt week to week. Walker's out for the year. Turner ACL is no joke at all whatsoever. Um, I mean, they do play the Oilers, um, which I know we'll get to in a minute. And the Oilers have had some bad playoff history lately. So it's possible that Quick could steal that series. That's but what like, my line I, of thinking was a little bit, yeah. 
I, I just I just don't know how far that can take them. Like if they beat the Oilers round one, I'm pretty sure that series is set and is already set in stone. If they beat the Oilers in round one, like I wouldn't be surprised. But overall, I'm not too entirely crazy about the four. Five, like five percent. Five, yeah, that's respectable. I mean, I have. Cliff would have to go like completely berserk, like he did in the first two uh, cup runs that they had. Yeah, I think it's also me. I see their defense a little bit sharper, even through the injuries, because of how impressive they've been able to play through the injuries. Where I have to give credit where credit's due. It's not now. Don't get me wrong; it's not an ideal situation at all to be in heading into the postseason, having your top line of defense be injured and your second line right shot defenseman be injured but it, it, when you have that and you're still in this position and you're still a plus on the season only a plus two but that's because of different factors some of their minus guys like yeah. Dursey started off too far in the minus because he was I think over pushing in the offensive zone and it seems like McClellan's got him to calm down a little bit more so I think if he can continue to do that and not get over aggressive where young kids do that's my worry. Will the young kids on their team get over aggressive in the playoffs, which happens at time, or will they still be able to kind of stay within themselves? But that's why I, I kind of just give it the, the, the 15, but five is definitely a, a respectable one just because the, the, they are a team that could go either way. That's why they're such an interesting team to follow. Victor Arvidsson also is one of my favorite players to follow because he's a little he bit taller is, than I am and is a pretty good NHL player. But we'll have to move this one along a little bit quicker as I'm uh, coming close on some time here. I need to roll out for stuff. But the Edmonton Oilers are one of the most interesting plus 36 teams I've ever seen in the history of hockey because they are not a plus 36 at all because of their defense, minus a few a few guys. Let me lay that out. There's are a few guys that impressed me. Like Leon Dreisold is a great two-way forward. I said he should be the Selkie guy, I believe, when we did that uh, video. So, But – Overall, their team defense is obviously leaves a lot to be desired, and their defenseman net front defense obviously leaves a lot to be desired. And also, if Mike Smith's not playing like he's playing now, and more like the struggle bunny season he had as a whole, and Koskin is not able to play like he's had the peaks of this year, which we haven't seen in other years of his career, but he's had had higher peaks this year. There, there's a big question in net. So they're one of the most interesting 100-point teams and plus 36 teams that their stats are kind of deceiving in a sense. Uh, I'll let you go first on this one because they're so interesting. Where the hell do you put the Oilers? Yeah, it, it's it's weird with them. Like, I mean, yeah, guys like McDavid and Dreisaitl are literally like two of, the, two, <laughs> two of the five um, I still think McDavid's the best player in the world. Drysdale's not far behind him. Um, I mean, Evander Kane was a good pickup for them, which I disagreed with picking him up at the time because Evander Kane's just kind of had some skeletons in his closet. Um, and it's where worked I was out, like, which is nice. Yeah, it, yeah, it's worked out. I mean, Yamamoto is pretty good too. Um, I mean, Fogel as a third line player is good. Nugent Hopkins as their third center is pretty awesome. I mean, I like their center. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like I like their depth right down the middle. I mean that center depth is just sauce. It's their forward I mean, it, depth that concerns me. Yeah, yeah, but the centers they got pretty pretty darn well. Oh, um, if any, yeah. yeah, I mean McDavid. I mean Drysdale is a number one center on almost every other team. Yeah. It's just that McDavid's and on his team. And Hopkins is a second line center on a lot. Yeah, of yeah. So like their centers yeah. are amazing. Like McDavid's really like. Where's the camera? Like this much better than dry saddle. It's really not that much of a difference in my opinion. Um, I mean, their, their defense, like I'm not too crazy with like Duncan Keith isn't nearly as good as he used to be like Cody CC. Like, nah, nah. Keith's I'm not really be more valuable in the offensive zone at this point. Yeah, exactly. Which like, is why Bouchard is a good youngster to put with him. But then my concern is Bouchard's been kind of touting up Keith a little bit this year. And he's a young guy with no, not much playoff experience 
right, what's he right. going to do under the pressure of the bright lights in his first. Right. So that that's yeah. another thing. I'm guessing Darnell Nurse will probably come back by playoffs. It says that's what it day. sounded like. With he, he, he's pretty good. I mean, he'll he'll he's be a, a good player. contributor for offense. Like I'm not like blown away by him or anything, but like. They just, for me, they need better defense and definitely better goaltending. Like Mike Smith's played well lately, but like, I, I don't think, that. Smith, huh? They need that. What you just said is what they need. Yeah, to play yeah. Smith has been hot lately, lately, but he's so he's so hot and cold. It's exactly. like which one are you gonna get? Like he's got pretty good athleticism and he's good at handling the puck from what I've seen. Yeah, he tried to score two goals yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but it's like sometimes he just gets so out of position. It's like, what the hell are you doing, bro? He shot um, one yesterday on Casey DeSmith because he was able to get back in the net to try to save it. And then immediately the next one, he thought he was going to score, started skating out to celebrate. And I was like, oh, shit. As it skates. Yeah, skates yeah, off it's, the yeah, post yeah. I mean, I think went for nice with thing. them. Ah, oh, man, with, with, with them, it's hard to say. Um, I thought someone rang my doorbell. I hope not. That doorbell's annoying and I'm lazy. Um, gosh, if then that's hard. I'd say uh, I'd give them like eh, I'd give them like a I'd give them like an eight per, Yeah, I'd go with an eight percent. Why not? I'd give them like an eight. Like I just don't like the defense and goaltending very much. Yeah, I don't love the, Smith. I've liked a lot as kind of like a guy that's able to never be the greatest uh, in the league, but always has had some seasons where he's played up and was one of the best in that particular season and has been good his whole career. But like he's 40 now, uh, has had injury issues this year and is now hot. And you said, as, as you said, he's been hot or cold in the last couple calendar years of his career, minus last season where he was just fantastic. So like if Mike Smith continues to have that then i think they're set but if not then i i think the oilers i'm going to give them 10 just because of how good you said their center depth is, and that's a huge concern that for is me going into the playoff uh, for a team huge. and even devin shore ain't a bad fourth line center at the age of yeah. 27 still awesome. growing so yeah. uh but broussard's not a great playoff style player. He's not bad, but he's not great. Zach Cassian has left some stuff to be desired this year. So is he going to be able to be? He profiles as a good playoff style player from the body he has and the box out ability, but he's a slow skater, which doesn't play as well to this this current game. Uh, yeah. But if you're that smart like he is, you can still play with. So what's he going to do in the playoffs? Uh, Ryan's right. been inconsistent. Fogel's been inconsistent, but I agree with you. He is a very good bottom six forward throughout his career. This year, he's been inconsistent. New right, right, great. Right. Top six, I'm not worried about. It's oh, no. defense and goal. To, that's why I put it yeah. at a 10, because their offense, to me, that's what got them to a plus 36. If they can just dominate, but that's hard to do in the playoffs, but if they can just be, kind of wear you down with puck possession in the top six and keep the team defending – and that's kind of how they can beat you because they're not going to be the best defensive team. They got to be go north as quick as damn possible, get the puck north, and then keep it in the offensive zone to tire out the opponent. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I thought about a ten, but I'll I'll give it an eight just because I don't like their defense defenseman and goalie. And if you, for those of you that just saw me randomly walk, I was wondering who was ringing my doorbell, and it was the Amazon people. They ring the. It was like a buzzer because I'm in like a condo. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, they do they, that. And then they, they hit it like a thousand times. Like, Henry, 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 him. And like, oh, any, anyways, uh, I'm like, no, all right, let's, cool. let's, let's just keep on going. I, yeah, I, I, I have ADD, salary. so I get distracted so easily. Have, so. Yeah, I have a little bit of, uh, of like about 15 minutes uh, left here as we're rolling to Calgary, cool. who is a plus 88. <laughs> Talk about a team that. <laughs> been able to be great on both ends of the ice. They didn't expect it goals against and all that stuff. They're also good. But just watching this team on the ice, well, they're going to have a goaltender that's up there for the Vezina as well. Because, Hope I can second. Yeah, I mean, Markstrom came in there and proved all the doubters wrong. At the age of 32, he's playing like he's 27. Is he 32? I thought yeah. he was older younger than that. Oh, my gosh. He's 38. He's yeah, he's had his best year, too. He's had, like, what, yeah. 10 shutouts and yeah, just, all sorts of stupid, just all sorts of stupid numbers. I mean, yeah, Calgary is just a beast. Like, they're just really good. Not only is their logo cool as hell, yeah. um, but, you know, they – 
I mean, that top line is the best top line in hockey this year, in my opinion. You have Johnny Gaudreau, who's at like 105 points or something like that. I mean, Lindholm, Kachuk, like that top line is just beautiful. Like they're all having like – Yeah, and I, th- I think they all – I think each of those three have like 40 goals, if I'm not mistaken. So that, that top line is going to be very, very hard for – We need Johnny um, to get one top. more. Johnny needs to get one more. Oh, against, one more. Okay. One more against yeah. uh, either Minnesota or Winnipeg, their final two game. And then right. he would also be at 40. And then everybody on that line, you're absolutely right, would be. Because it's right, 41, right. 41, 39. But Goudreau yeah, also crazy. has been I an mean, assist wizard all year. So. I, I mean, I mean, even even looking at it down, like Metropani's had a career year. Tyler Toffoli's good. Um, I mean, even if you go Dylan down Dubé, one ball, like Ian Mark, Blake Coleman. <laughs> Yeah, it's like that team has just been insane this year. Like they they have definitely exceeded my expectations. And Lucic has been irrelevant. Lucic has been irrelevant the last couple of years of his career. Yeah, this but he gets better as the playoffs get yeah. because of his oh, physical yeah. style. He always play. gets good in the playoff. I'm saying like he's been tough to watch in the regular season. This year he hasn't even been tough to watch in the regular season because he's just kind of fit into a role with Lewis and Richie uh, yeah. on that fourth line or whoever else uh, has also been thrown into that fourth line. Obviously Monahan's been banged up. Otherwise, yeah. I mean, he's out for the season. But, um, but oh, that's right, that's right, Mon- Yeah, because Monahan, he was like he their fourth playing line center this year. Yeah, but he wasn't even playing that well anyway. So I feel yeah. like his best days ahead or away from the Calgary. Right, plays, he was of, pretty darn good at one point too. Oh, yeah, but I forgot about that. Or, yeah. Or um, elsewhere. For you. Yeah, I mean, and and like their their defensemen are relatively good. Like they didn't really blink much when they lost Giordano, which like he's like thirty eight. So it's like, yeah, I kind of get why they let him go. Like let him unprotected. I mean, uh, Rasmus Anderson's been good. Chris Tanev is a second defenseman. Zadorov is like the third pair. I don't think, in my opinion, at least, I don't think the Flames have a true number one defenseman. Like that. No, guy. they just have a great mix of six. Guys. Yeah, they have a good. They have a great mix, but like I just feel like in the playoffs, like you need that number one defenseman to step up. I mean, yeah, I, I'm gonna give them like a pretty, pretty good chance of winning the cup. Another bad thing is, like, the Canadian team has not won a Stanley Cup since 1993, so that's been a bit of a curse on Canadian teams as well. So that's like a concern. I know that sounds stupid, but like. I'm kind of like more superstitious in hockey than I am with football, because um, it's hockey like also you know, has more superstition. I think hockey, yeah, they do. Might have the most superstitions to pay. Yeah, out. but it's it's one of those things for me. It's like I need to like see it in order to believe it. Like they need to prove it to me. I mean, Calgary's really good. Like mm-hmm. they they are incredible. Um, I mean, I, if they could have a pretty decent path to go to the West final. If they play the Stars in round one, I think that's going to be easier for them than it would be if they played Nashville in round one. And then round two, they would play like the Kings or the Oilers, which like I think Calgary would would beat either one of them. Uh, I I just think they're just too well rounded for Kings Oilers. I'm not like like we just talked about. I don't not I'm not too crazy on on them chance wise. So I mean, with the combination of all that, uh, I'd give Calgary like. Mm, I'd go like, yeah, I'm trying to think. I'd say like 25%. Okay, see, Calgary for me, um, they're one of my higher just because they don't have the other team we're going to talk about, like I said, the two Cs. Colorado has some stuff that Calgary doesn't that we'll get to when I get to Colorado. But I think they have a good team, maybe not as proven commodities as some of the cats on the Avalanche yeah. from top to bottom line, right. but uh, th- they have a good team. Adding Blake Coleman was a huge addition because he was down there in Tampa, of yep. course, so he yep. brings great experience. But they don't have a true number one defensive, so that is a concern, but what I like is the perfect mix because Shilinton started playing great this year. Tad, Zadorov, Gabranson. Gabranson's had one of his best seasons, too, at the age of 30. And then they've shaped Noah Hannafin into what people thought Noah Hannafin was going to be right out of, out of the draft, where hey, he's one of the other of multiple people that's a perfect example of sometimes you just got to be patient, where now Noah Hannafin is a very good defenseman. Now, he might not be a perfect one pair, but he's definitely a perfect two pair in defenseman or a second defenseman on a team. He just happens to be on the first line with Anderson working out well. They've shaped him into not just what people thought coming out of the draft for a lot of scouting reports that he could be good in the offensive zone, but he's become pretty damn good two ways. So I think the way that Sutter 
has had the experience, obviously, in the playoffs as well. Again, going back to the LA Kings, uh, Trevling's done a good job of building the team. I actually give them as high as 38. I think they have one of the better chances, honestly, just because. Actually, I'm going to go Marks- 30. I take that back. I feel like 25 is a little bit too low for a team like them and the path I was talking about. I'm going to say 30. I changed my mind. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. I feel like Markstrom, too. <laughs> I got to give credit where credit's due for a goalie that has kind of beat the doubters his entire career. And yeah, then and he can feel a series of how well yeah. he's played this year. And then at 32 I'll after this season, and Vladar has been a perfect backup youngster. Yeah, I'll team. say I'll say 30. I'll give him 30. Yeah. I think I think so far, I think Hurricanes have been my highest with 35 or something like that. I can't, I think, I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. I was starting to write down the percentage from the other video because I forgot to do it during the video. I think I gave somebody 38. In last video, I but I gave them my. I feel like I gave somebody a thirty-eight with the possibility of forty because I was thinking of forty, but I didn't want to go that high. I yeah, feel like I remember doing that. Thirty for Calgary. Yeah. But yeah, they're very darn good. But when it comes to our next team here, as uh, this one is one of the more interesting teams, plays by a guy that's beloved here, a coach by a guy that's beloved here in Philadelphia. I should say Craig Barube, mm-hmm. um, who plays. This is a team that's fun to watch on the ice because they have skill. But they also will beat the living crap out of any <laughs> team if they have to. Uh, and they kind of remind you of a more skilled level of Nashville in that way. The style that Nashville tries to pound anybody that comes into their house. Um, that's the same with St. Louis. But St. Louis has the more skill. Huso really stepping up. Binner has not been good this year. They're Stanley Cup goaltender. But what they're definitely one of the more interesting teams because they have a lot of guys that have been there, done that. But there's also other teams that have the more like Calgary and Colorado, the top end on paper talent. Where would you kind of put the Blues percentages? Uh, I really like the Blues this year, honestly. I mean, they're going to have a hard first round with them in Minnesota, which I'm pretty sure that's already been confirmed. I'm super pumped for that first round, honestly. That's going to be fireworks. Uh, Blues have also been red hot. They have the right momentum going into the playoffs, just like they did when they won the Cup a few years ago. I mean, that team has so much, like, incredible depth scoring. Um, Goaltending's been good. Huso's been that guy. Bennington's been some crap this year, honestly. So I'm sure they're going to roll with Huso going into the playoffs. But they have so many 20-plus goal-scoring guys, like Bitch Navich and Robert Thomas and Tarasenko and Brandon Saad and Ryan O'Reilly. Jordan Cairo, I think uh, Barbashev, too, or yeah, he's something been very like that. good, yeah. Yeah, and like Bozak is a third line center, and then you get into their defense. Like Paranko is pretty good. Um, Justin Falk's pretty good too. Nick Letty, um, Tori Crew, real experience too, going back to his Blackhawks days. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, and then I forgot about Brendan Shen. He's had a good year. David Perron, like. He's had a good year. They're both day to day. I would imagine they'll be back by playoffs. Yeah, I, would think so for the playoffs. Yeah, I mean the the Blues are honestly loaded with some good talent. I mean baruby has been a good coach for them too. Um, Letty's definitely a guy that you would like to see more out of in the playoffs because he yeah, wasn't that great. Blues are good. Blues are good, man. They're 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 pre- they're pretty darn good. I, there's not a whole lot of weakness with that team. I mean, maybe they don't have that like stack true. Defense, yeah, maybe they don't have that true number one defenseman, but yeah, I, I might say thirty for them too. I, 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 I mean, that's I, more I, where I would have them. Like I have the Flames yeah. an eight percent bump on them because of how I how I explain the Flames or the Blues, especially because Nick Letty throughout his career has been much better than this year. But we don't know if he's all of a sudden going to turn that on in the postseason. Right. Uh, he's had a down year. Folks had a great year. Krug's been good. Callie Rosen's even come in and played good out of nowhere, so that's been nice. Mikola's been good, and then Peronovich has been an okay sub-in, uh, and actually I think he's going to develop into a steady guy for them, but they he just needs time because he's a guy that's smaller, needs to learn how to play at the NHL level without running through a brick wall and having injury history at his side. But I think he's going to be a guy that they might even put in in the playoffs when he comes back because of his talent level and probably will go in for Callie Rosen but or, or Mikola. But the their team, I think that's where they leave a bit to be desired on name brand defense. But at the same time, you don't need name brand defense if everyone plays really well. But Nick Letty needs to perform better to me. And I think they want to have, even though he's only played 19 games and hasn't been in all the time, 
Uh, I think he's still expected to be out for at least a month, so I don't know. They would have to go kind of deep, but getting a Puzranovic back is almost like getting a trade guy back in the playoffs with his talent level. So that'll be interesting. I give them 30 because I like their chances, but I do think that first round is going to battle between the waters, going to be potentially a seven-gamer. So it's going to be tough for whatever team kind of gets past that to have the same energy and spunk and grit and grind and grueling play to the beginning of the next series because they're just probably going to be gassed from how great I think that first round series might be. Yeah, it's it'll, it'll be interesting to see. I, I like the Blues a lot this year, honestly. I do too, but I think it's just that's a big factor when you have a first round series that looks like it might be one for the ages and um, the, the teams are going to get beat up potentially pretty good in that series that mm-hmm. then you have to turn around if it goes seven and right away play where potentially the other series could have only won five. So that team has a lot of days off as rested legs. So like all that stuff could factor in. We'll know more as we go into the playoffs, but that's why I put them at 30 compared to all the reasons I said with the Flames, uh, why I put them at the 38. But we now mm-hmm. go into their opponent. That's a plus 53 on the season, a team – that has Kirill Kaprizov, the career year of Ryan Hartman. I don't think anybody expected Ryan Hartman to become one of the better scoring centers. Forget wingers, because everyone thought he was going to be a winger, but centers uh, in the game. And then you continue to have guys like Frederick Goudreau kind of go from being a good AHL to learning how to play in the NHL and having a career year. Eric Sinek's obviously a great guy to have in the playoffs because he's so good in the defense. Yeah, I was going to say, he's a good third line say. Foligno, perfect playoff player. Um, they, yeah. uh, DeLauriers is a perfect grab for the playoffs because he's a guy that will defend anybody on his team. Yost was a good grab. So they have, I think this team's very deep. They just lack experience big time. That's yeah. the problem with the Wild. Minus, obviously, the addition of Mark andre Fleury and Alex Kolagoski as well. They don't have a lot of guys that have that playoff run experience, minus mm-hmm. Kolagoski and Fleury, who actually were once with each other on the same team before as well. And Kolagoski, you got to give it plus 42 at the age of 36 is, oh. <laughs> is, rid- is ridiculous. So hats off to Kolagoski for his hell of a season, and he's a great playoff guy to have. But – and, and I think they might have re-signed him, too. But either way, they should if they didn't. But, the, yeah, they did. He's a UFA in 2024, so good for them. Uh, but the thing for him is, uh, for them, I should say, is you have to have one of Flurry or Talbot, I think, really step up and take the bull by the horn. And I really I'm like Cam Flurry. Talbot his entire career. And I've always liked Flurry as well. And Flurry has a player of experience, but Talbot's actually been the better goalie since Flurry's went to went to Minnesota. So it's an interesting thing yeah. entering the postseason. But either way, I'm confident in their goaltending. So they're kind of at the same as the Blues. I kind of almost put like I put them at twenty eight percent because I think mm-hmm. the blue and I put the blue actually no, I'm actually just gonna put them both at thirty because I think that series is like that's kind of even in a seven game series. If I think, series. If I think the series is going that, seven. that might be the best series around one. At least it'll be up there. That's gonna be yeah. absolutely amazing. I mean that's Wild why I put them both at thirty because if the series is going seven, I have to be fair. I think that's yeah, two teams yeah, it's, that it's, have it's, a very good shot. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be close. I mean, both of those teams are coming in hot. Um, I'm super pumped to do our prediction show Monday, assuming that all holds up and everything. I mean, also too, the Wild have a few injuries, but Dumbo, Zuccarello, and Spurgeon, I probably or Spurgeon or whatever. Spurgeon, I suck at pre- yeah. yeah, I suck at pronouncing names. I don't know how those people that do the high school graduations pronounce all these crazy names. I I, I can never do it. Well, if he um, and Dumbo come back, that's huge also. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. And Zuccarello coming back is huge because him and Caprice. Well, yeah, he's been freaking ridiculous kind of with Caprice. Um, he's only day-to-day, though, where the other guys are yeah. listed as injury on no. Have they decided the right who they're team. starting between Flurry and Talbot? I don't think there's been a dis- – I feel like they're trying to do – I don't think they're going to – I think Everson's honestly going to do one of those I ain't doing it until, like, even yeah. potentially warm-ups. And then the I guys come out. I so they can't. Well, yeah, but I think that's a good strategy, though, because I actually like that strategy from coaches because then you're game planning for who you think's going to start, but then say he doesn't, then you're just like, well, shit. Like, like you, yeah, game, yeah. You have to, you, then you have to split focus your game planning so you're not 
as sharp as you normally would be. So I think that is a good strategy by Coach. Yeah, it is. It is. I agree with that. It, I mean, me personally, I would start Flurry just because of the experience. experience and like, yeah. What he's done in the playoffs in recent years has been insane, uh, especially his Vegas years. It's like, oh, my gosh. Like, that especially was- the first year of Vegas, like he was a massive, massive reason why they even got to the cup final. Um, I mean, me personally, I would start Flurry, but I can see an argument for Talbot. Um, Either way, it's a good fullback guy, no matter who you yeah, it is. And so I mean, it's one of the best tandems in the league. Right. So right. have it, a chance yeah. to win that award. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good tandem. And, like, yeah. so, I mean, that that's that's a good thing to have. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a good tandem. Uh, I mean, yeah, Kirill Kaprizov has been incredible. You know, just the, like the guys you named, too. Um, Hartman's been amazing. Fiala. I, I'd say I'd give him, like, I'd give them like a tw- like a. I'm not I'm not too too crazy on their on their uh, center depth in a way. I kind of wish they had like a more dominant guy. Um, I do person. think they help their defensive side of it though with getting a, yeah. Like, they have two really good me. defensive centers now. With yeah, Eric Sinek and Goudreau's added more offense. So I think I don't, they have think, I don't think they have that true dominant number one defenseman either. No, they don't. I mean, yeah, I, I'd give them like a 28%. Like, I like the Blues more just because there's more depth, like, scoring-wise. And like, I just sense. I just think the Blues are just a better structured team. Uh, I mean, while they're good, they're coming in there with some good momentum. I, I'd, I'd give them like a, like a 28%. And then here's the team that I envision us probably giving the highest percentage to. Uh, that is the Colorado Avalanche. There's a picture of him that I took over here and net with the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, Darcy Kemper, one of my uh, favorite goaltenders, uh, plays for the uh, Avalanche. So, obviously, there's a little bit of a bias in me when it comes to talking <laughs> about the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, but I, I think their team all put together, he's a guy that got thrown around a little bit by the national media early in the year because he didn't get off to the hottest start, which is fine because I don't know how it takes people. I think a lot of people that really podcast and really cover hockey, like the Russ Cohen's of the world, the uh, guys on sports that like always of the world, they realize it takes a while to gel into a team as a new goaltender, especially, but sometimes people are just like, Oh, well, you know. mm-hmm. like, and it's ridiculous when people start bitching about a goalie so early in the season that he's not even used to just got to meet his new team and training camp. And like goaltenders, it's sometimes they have to get used and get the chemistry, but he's been great since then. And Francois had his best season since his first season as a backup, and that gave that's what uh, made them comfortable keeping him around because of how good that goaltending room did. So, oh yeah, it's a good goaltending. I'm duo. confident with their goaltending duo because Francois, when healthy, has been fantastic in his career. Uh, Eric Johnson and Byram has paired well, and Johnson, knock on wood, has finally had a very healthy season. Samuel Gerard and Josh Manson, that's a huge addition as well, especially yep. for the playoffs. Josh yep. Manson is a perfect player, and he has had good playoffs with the Ducks. McCall and Taze is a great line, potentially oh my the best God. defensive line in yeah, hockey. I would, say, I would say it's the best deep here in the league. And then Ben Myers, the kid they added out of college, I was watching him. Uh, some people recognize his name, but with Red uh, Berenson, the former uh, Michigan coach, we went in the uh, uh, off-ice officials room and started watching that game where he's the guy that ended up scoring that crazy overtime goal in the NCAA uh, frozen four regionals where he just cut to the front of the neck, got the great pass. He has great instincts. He doesn't have the silkiest mitts overall skill wise, but he might have potential to eventually be a big part of their team in the future. I don't know how much they're using this year, but he's a good player. Landis Cog is banged up. So he wasn't even uh, in there and he's out for a minute potentially, but hopefully he can come back. And then week to week, I think is how Murray's listed. Johnson and McNamee have played very good for them as well. They're similar to how I said about Brenda Moore's team. And uh, similar to how I even said about the Kings, that even though whoever's been in has kind of just fit in well to that team and that locker and then the system and has played well, where Jack Johnson's had the best season of his career in six years. So when he's been in for those 73 games and McNamee's had a career year. So all that compounded with the fact that they're the most skilled team in the NHL, I think, uh, when you just watch them with the Radinins of the world, uh, the McKinnons, the even Arturi liking him with how good he started doing this year. They gave up a lot for him, but uh, he seems to have fit in with the team. Burakovsky, the third line's great with Newhart, Confer, O'Connor, who's a playoff style. All of those guys are kind of playoff style players. Um, I think 
they have to be the team that I do put the 40 ish. Yeah. Like the 40 ish. percent maybe yeah. even on uh, because they definitely are the highest percentage, I think, to win in the NHL. And then Florida, so, I think, is the closest to them in terms of overall percentage, right, probably. Right. And then Calgary right there. Yeah, I'll have to look it all up, and then maybe I'll just text you or something because I forget what exactly I said. But that's – I think you and I have similar percentages. I mean, you're probably higher on a few other teams than I am. I don't I don't know if I've been higher on any teams than you or maybe. But, I mean, it, a lot of it's been close, and this has been fun. Um, I mean, yeah, Colorado has beautiful – Depth all around. I mean, McKinnon's been a beast. Kadri at the second center. Burakovsky. Um, they were saying that Landis Cog should be back by the beginning of the playoffs. Is Ranton hurt? I don't even see him on this. No, uh, Rantanen has a day-to-day illness, so he's not hurt. He oh, has an illness. Yeah, he'll come back. I don't know why I don't see him on this site, but because uh, I, I like to look at lines and stuff like that, too, just to remember what I'm talking about. Yeah, he's about. still listed in the lines. Just yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, maybe some decision. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and um, but yeah, they have, they have, they're loaded pretty much everywhere, and I think Bowen Byram is going to be an awesome player in the near future. I like what I see out of him. Um, They're just loaded pretty much everywhere. I mean, if the Caps don't win the whole thing, I would root for Colorado just because I like that team and how they play. And uh, Denver's just an awesome city, and they haven't won a cup in a long time. Um, I mean, I would would say 40%, and I think – the reason why, like, part of me wants to go higher, but I'm gonna just cap it at forty because Not they've had naive, yeah, to be more. Relevant. Yeah, exactly. They they they've had some bad injury luck in recent years in the playoffs. It kind of seems like, and they just there's been recent years too where they just haven't lived up to those expectations. But it's looking like they're not gonna win the Presidents Trophy, which is why I think I knocked Florida down like a little tiny bit because uh, that thing's freaking cursed. Um, so I. I uh, again, I'm kind of superstitious with that stuff. So they're not going to win the president's trophy. That's a good sign for them. Um, there's a lot to like with that team. I I'll, I'll say, I'll say 40. They should be a force. I'm not going to make any official predictions just yet until everything kind of unravels. Yeah. It comes to my bracket and all That's that stuff. That's what we do on Monday more so. Whenever oh yeah. I'm pumped for that. With steel. But anyway, E-Money, I thank you for joining as I got to get flying here as I'm going to be covering in Lehigh at the PPL center. So anybody that, uh, is going to be up there. Uh, it's going to be, well, once this video comes out, it'll be after the game. But I would cool. be happy to see you if I did talk to you and you've watched this video. So it was nice seeing you then. Uh, but this has been the latest edition of the Sports Fanatic News Show as we got to recap the Western Conference, just like we did with the Eastern Conference. I'll link that video at the end as we gave our percentages on both conferences. Check out both of them and give us your feedback on what you think your percentages are for each of either your teams or if you're somebody that pays attention to the overall league as well overall as well like we just did have a great safe day everybody enjoy the weather and also enjoy the hockey rounding into the playoffs oh, Peace out, everybody. Yeah.